Hey everybody, my expect the comics, and I'm back. This time I picked up books so old that it'll make your baby face grow some peach fuzz. If you're interested in seeing what books I picked up at a local antique mall, stay tuned for that intro. So welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so when I do put out some content, you get it in a timely fashion. Like I said, I ended up picking up some really old books at an antique mall. I'm away again for the summer. And I like to do that from time to time because they do a lot of travel work. And this time I'm up in Vermont for the summer. So I'm looking for new places, new exciting you know, spots to check out. And I had some time in town and I found a really big antique mall. I'm going to shoot some footage for you. And you guys can check it out real quick. And then we'll come back and show you the books. Hmm? Are those real gumballs? Yeah, what? Care about to get to the mm -hmm. And then we lost power. <laughs> so it's pretty funny how this this happens, but you know, I'll just end the video here. So that antique mall was really big. It's uh, an antique mall in like the Hartford, Vermont area, which is like right on the border of you know Vermont and. Uh, New Hampshire, right on that White River Junction town. So um, they had well over 100 booths. I think they said like 100 to 150. I, I don't know offhand. I, I didn't have enough time to uh, check them all out. There was a lot of booths that had comic books. Um, but a lot of it's modern stuff, you know, 90s, 2000s. Very, uh, not books that I usually seek. So uh, I did find a booth on the second floor and they had some pulps so uh not books you see very often if ever and especially in an antique mall uh there was only one other time i found a pulp and it was surprising enough in an antique mall in massachusetts but uh never seen this many concentration of pulps so uh pulps you know classically you're known for books that are in 
you know, platinum age into the golden age. And um, these were uh, both platinum and golden age. Um, and this will actually, you know, constitute as my oldest comic book, you know, media that I have in the collection. So I'm going to show you. I ended up picking up five books and uh, I actually just um, they had more. They had, little, I think, 10 to 15 pulps there. But, you know, I didn't want to spend too much. I don't know a lot about pulps. Um, I just picked the uh, the books that had eye appeal, you know, <laughs> going, going on uh, one of the books I picked up. So uh, I recently saw um, Bob's comics. He ended up picking up a really cool pulp from uh, DS Comics, which is really nice. And uh, it was a fantastic, uh, famous fantastic mystery. So uh, I'm going to show a couple of the books from that run. and at this antique mall they actually had i think the first three I don't know, six or set first issue to like the first seven issues or something like that i had to do a lot of research uh, i went on my comic shop and you can actually look at all the uh the books that are on there which is a big help um i recommend doing that before you actually you know go ahead and dive into pulps because pulps is a completely different animal you know golden age is in its own sector of comic collecting when you get into pulps it's like you're out there so um the first book i picked up and uh this will end up going nicely with a beer i'm drinking today and uh drinking a nice little proper peach which was actually a brewery alongside the antique mall so this was um foley brothers out of Brandon, Vermont. That's where they're headquartered. That's where they bottle. But they also have a small brewery, like, well, small, like, you know, a little pub that you can get their beers out of in Quichi. So, uh, a little proper peach. It almost has a little Rhode Island play with that name, proper. But um, breaking that, and I also got a famous Fantastic Mysteries issue number. Shoot, I don't even know the number. Um, I want to say it's one of the first few issues in the run. This is the problem. This is like I said, I don't know too much about pulps because a lot of these don't actually tell you the numbers on the front. So you actually have to, nor on the side, but it does tell you it's from March of 1940. So this is Golden Age. Um, and uh, it talks about Flash, the blind spot. I picked this up because it's a cool cover. I like that Medusa flare there at the bottom. Uh, this character there has a Medusa hair. She has like a little mermaid-esque looking thing going on there. And um, you got a little spaceship, but you know I like sci-fi. So I picked that up and I did a little bit of research. And it ends up being the first Virgil Finlay cover. I don't know if it's his first cover work, but it's the first Virgil Finlay in the title. So if you guys know a little bit more, more about pulps, you can, you know, clarify. But from what I did some research, it's his first cover in the title. And I opened it up inside. It's actually issue number six. So that's pretty cool. And it's all there. It's all intact, you know, which is nice. And uh, these don't actually, if you read some pulps, some of them don't have any pictures inside. It's just stories. So you're going to see a lot of these, some promos, advertisements, stuff like that. But I thought that was pretty cool. So, and the prices on these were fantastic. You know, a lot of pulps, you're not going to get in spectacular shape. If you can get a pulp that's like a fine you know, like mid grade, that's considered high grade for pulps. You don't usually, you don't usually get pulps in like super high grade, like you would expect from a, you know, modern book, like a 780. Those don't really exist. You can find them from time to time, but you're going to be more often seeing them in low grade VG and so forth. This next book I got is actually in VG. Um, but like I said, with pulps, you know, these, the material that they're made out of pulp, you know, this magazine print type of uh, these, you know, type of media, they fall apart. You know, like I said, it's, they don't really 
hold up the test of time. So it's it's really just fascinating just to have one of these in your hand. Um, but this is uh, Famous Fantastic Mysteries. And you can see now it's a 25 center. The first one was actually uh, a 15 center. So uh, pretty cool. Um, this is from September of 1943. And when I open it up inside, because like I said, they don't state the issue number on there. I want to say this is issue number. So interestingly enough, they write the volume number. So it's volume five, issue number four. So I don't know what, you know, how many of these they put in the issues like per volume. But uh, I really like that cover. You got this uh, little dinosaur there You're shooting out some uh, lightning bolts at these. Uh, almost looks like a little damsel in distress, but it's a it's not the red dress. It's a blue dress, which is uh, interesting. You don't usually see that too much in the uh, Golden Age. It's usually the red dress. And uh, it has this guy in this little space helmet as well. So pretty neat. And uh, I thought so, at least. Uh, pretty cool. And like I said, another Virgil Finley cover or Finlay. And this is the last one of the uh, of the uh, famous Fantastic Mysteries. I got this because I had like a horror, you know, cover vibe to it, which I thought was really neat. This is from October of 1940. And this is actually a Canadian. Um, is this a Canadian edition? Yeah, this says 10 cents. Sure. Get this. Up a little bit. Be careful because it is very delicate. So, so actually, it says volume two, issue number four. Interesting. Uh, but it also indicates here at the top that the so it's not a it's not a Canadian, it's an American. But it says at the top there you see Canada twelve cents, which the other one didn't have that at all. Interesting. But uh, fantastic, famous, fantastic mysteries, volume two, issue number. Already what it was. Volume two, issue number four, October of 1940. So pretty cool. I like this. It has like a cool little horror vibe to it. Pretty neat. You know, like I said, lower grade, but really cool find. It says Merritt's famous, the face in the abyss, fungus isle Philip M. Fisher. I like how it has the uh this guy here too, it has the uh snake wrapped around them so really cool and uh i want to say this is all yep virgil finlay so virgil finlay did the vast majority if not all of the covers in this title and you can usually see it at the bottom right of the cover it has his name on it so that was a pretty cool find i'm just gonna put that aside i'm not even gonna waste time with putting these back in the bags i tell you these are very difficult to find bags and boards for uh these books they're not easy um so going on to 20s so this is a uh, platinum platinum age this is from the 20s this book is actually from i don't know which one's the older one but they're both old this is from 1928 uh, this one's in rough shape and this is an amazing stories so this is september of 1928 this is volume three issue number six Amazing stories. That is cool. It's in rough shape, but it's all there. You know, you're going to see a lot of these type of spines in these books. But look at it. It's a significantly larger in size. You know. than the fantastic famous, the famous mysteries. But this is significant because it is the first science fiction logo cover so you see a lot of these in some of the other covers later in the title but this is the first time that you see that which is really cool you know i mean i like sci-fi you know and it's it's pretty cool because it has the uh the gears on there and it says fact or theory so that's cool i like that and then the last one is also from 1928, which, like I said, this will be, these two are the oldest, you know, comic books or source of media that I have in the collection. This is a really cool, I like this eye cover. 
I was talking about. This has eye appeal. This definitely has eye appeal. Amazing stories. It's in rough shape, but it's all good. It's all good. Um, I'm going to open this up. This one is definitely the most uh, delicate out of the box that I have. I believe the back cover is detached, which is okay. When you have a book this old, it is expected and okay to be, you know, in this condition. So April of 1928, volume three, issue number one. So very old, nearly a hundred year old book. You know, it has its condition issues, obviously, is the back and the back cover is actually detached. But like I said, it's all there. And that's what makes it amazing. And look at the eye, Please look at closely. Look at all that detail that you see in that eye. Truly eye appeal. So uh, that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, it's been a little bit since my last video, but like I said, you know, there's no, uh, I don't promise anything on the channel. I put content out there when I get it, you know, so hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you did, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys collect pulps? Um, do you like seeing odd stuff like this? Very old, unique stuff that, you know, truly scarce, truly rare stuff. Uh, if you do, let me know. And until next time, Mark's with the comics.